The story of America's national forests and other public lands can only make you shake your head and ask why. Why have we taken so many beautiful, biologically important, priceless places on our public lands and harmed and degraded them? And how long will we continue to do so? The Native Forest Council, a conservation group based in Oregon, has been saying for almost 20 years that America's national forests and other federal public lands should be protected from logging and other industrial activities. In this video, we'll use some new aerial and satellite photography tools to shed light on the subject. It's hard to see the changes that have taken place in the American landscape, but it's not impossible. The Native Forest Council has been at the forefront of using aerial and satellite photography to show these changes in a way that people can understand. We began by assembling tens of thousands of black and white aerial photographs from the U.S. Geological Survey to show entire national forests. In this case, the entire 1.7 million acre Willamette National Forest in Oregon. A little farther south in the Umpqua National Forest, the Boulder Creek Wilderness Area sticks out like a sore thumb. Outside of the wilderness area, in the plain old national forest, we see clear cuts as small white blocks, hundreds in this case. Each clear cut on national forests is about 10 to 60 acres in size, an acre being about the size of an NFL football field. In this image, there's a big white line around the Three Sisters Wilderness, just in case you can't tell it apart from the rest of the Willamette National Forest. Again, in greater detail, from wilderness to national forest. Decades-old aerial photos from the University of Oregon Map Library provide a window into the past, at least for a few areas. Here's part of the Deschutes National Forest in Oregon in 1951. Here it is 44 years later in 1995. The Middle Santiam in Oregon's Central Cascades is renowned for its native forest of large old Douglas fir. Here's the Middle Santiam in 1955. Here it is after 40 years of logging by the timber industry and the Forest Service. The logging roads appear as thin white lines winding around the contours of the mountainsides. The Middle Santiam shows again the difference between national forest wilderness, and here a worst case scenario, but not unique, of private industrial timberlands. Because there are a few pretty big wild places left in the West, we can pretty easily compare and contrast and see what the land used to be like and how it's changed. Here's the Mount Adams wilderness in Washington. To the west, the Gifford Pinchot National Forest pretty much speaks for itself. Here's 7,000 acres in the Three Sisters Wilderness and 7,000 acres in the nearby Detroit Ranger District of the Willamette National Forest. Leaving the Salmon Huckleberry Wilderness, the Mount Hood National Forest looks a bit like a war zone. This continued destruction of our public forests is unnecessary. National forests, for example, provide a small fraction of our wood fiber consumption as a nation. Not that the finances are nearly as important as the environmental aspects, but the entire process even loses money. The federal government subsidizes the logging roads, then often sells the forest for less money than it takes to pay for the process of selling the forest. What's more, the Forest Service places no value in their accounting on their inventory on the forest itself, on 500-year-old trees, or on any of the environmental services like clear, clean water or healthy salmon runs. Some estimates place the value of these services in the tens of trillions of dollars worldwide. The contribution from our 200 million plus acres of public forests must be staggering. 
To think that we're destroying nature, losing money doing it, and also devaluing these natural services just doesn't make any sense at all. It's time for a new long-term way of thinking about the value of public lands. New technology in the form of software called Google Earth provides a dramatic new look at our national forests and other public lands. Google Earth combines satellite photography, elevation modeling, and other technologies to create a virtual Earth. Google Earth uses computer graphics, but the images are real photographs of the Earth taken by satellites. You can zoom, tilt, and fly around the entire virtual Earth. This is Great Smoky Mountain National Park, the largest area of unlogged native forest, or so-called old growth, in the east. It's estimated to have about 100,000 acres of unlogged native forest. Here we see a forested roadless area in the park's interior. The best estimate of native forest remaining in the east as a whole, according to research published by the Sierra Club, is about one half of one percent, or two million acres remaining out of an original 950 million. As we leave Great Smoky Mountain Park and travel north towards Washington, D.C., the difference between the protected parklands and most of the rest of the east, almost all of which was forested when Europeans first arrived, becomes apparent. The eastern national forests, as small as they are, aren't pristine. Nevertheless, they provide an oasis in a landscape that's been otherwise transformed. This is the Bankhead National Forest in Alabama. It's hardly pristine, but when viewed in the context of its greater surroundings, we see that it's an important reservoir of forest in this part of the eastern U.S. Here's the Shawnee National Forest in Kansas. and the St. Francis National Forest in Arkansas. These remarkable new images underscore the fact that it's more important now than ever to protect these eastern national forests. There'll always be more pressures facing them in the future, more people and more development. The time to protect them is now.